Hello everyone and welcome back to another one of our vodcasts, our video podcasts, or just a podcast if you're listening to it as a podcast. That makes sense. We should just it? call it a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I like the term vodcast. I think that's great. Yeah. Well, yeah, true. Yeah, so it's one of our video podcasts, our vodcasts, and we have gone right back to another one of our franchise wars. And the greatest thing ever. Yeah, I know you wanted me to change the pictures, but I haven't. <laughs> it's still the same franchises. But that just means that people keep guessing as to what it is. Although they're it's not true. really guessing because it's in the title of the video. Oh. So they already know what it is. <laughs> I'm literally holding on. This. this is just my like block. This is Franchise Wars. But I, I do like it. I think it looks cool. Yeah. It's like a proper war of the franchises. Now, we've got an interesting one today. We do. I think will spark some decent debate. We have got Indiana Jones versus The Mummy. And we're doing, we're doing all four films of each, aren't we? So the four right. films of, of no. Indiana Jones. Yes. No, three films yes. for The Mummy. The Tom Cruise movie does not count because it is a oh. reboot. It is not a part of that franchise. All right, fine. But we will the count all four three. Indiana Joneses. So it is 4v3. Right. But we will go with not, it in that. So. I'm still so, not happy for the record. But, yeah. <laughs> so the main similarity between these two is the Tomb Raiding elements. Yes. And to be it's honest, debatable because they're very different types of Tomb Raiding elements, aren't they? But, but, the, but the principle works very well in both. Yeah. Right. They go it's, on adventures encounter some crazy things and both make archaeology look a lot more exciting than it actually is <laughs> definitely <laughs> i think indiana jones actually made the entire profession cool mm. oh yeah and <laughs> the problem most archaeologists found was they weren't harrison ford or yeah and they also didn't have a whip or a gun or a hat no and they weren't fighting nazis and all that sort of stuff no not directly anyway but also, uh, I also like the fact that, especially in Indiana Jones, a lot of the scenes are quite like um, video gaming. So, like in Indiana, Indiana Jones, you've got the bit where you run away from a boulder. I mean, that entire Crash Bandicoot series on PlayStation was him running away from a boulder. Well, that was really sort of one level in each sort of island yeah. setting. But yeah. no, I get what you're saying. <laughs> But it's funny that they actually opened up the series with that. So with Indiana Jones, they just went straight into action. Well, I think he went through pretty much all of that without saying a word. Mm, I never thought of it. It starts well, with... No, when he gets out, he does, when the guy catches him. Yeah, but that's after. So they do the whole sequence. Like, we're introduced to him, and he hasn't even said a word, and we've got big action set piece... And it's perfect storytelling because you know exactly what's going on without a word being said, without anything written down, without any signs. It's all visual. That is pretty good movie making, to be honest. Because um, you know what sort of person he is. You know that he's after that golden egg treasure thing. You know that he's running away from the booby traps and all that sort of stuff. Like, it's, it's very obvious what's going on without them having to spell it out and treat you like an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Although I don't think that thing, golden thing was an egg. I think it's like a headpiece or like a... Is it? It's a mini statue, yeah. Yeah, I forget. Okay. I'm sort of looking at it now. It's not the perfect sort of like egg shape, is it? <laughs> it's nothing like an egg. I, I think it's close enough. From a distance, you call it an egg. Well, from a distance, anything can be called an egg. <laughs> just, I was like, okay, next time I see like the Empire State Building, I'm like, oh, look at that egg. <laughs> that's essentially what you've done here the next time I see Stonehenge oh that's a lovely egg <laughs> it's a series of eggs Stonehenge is <laughs> we've lost the plot already yes um, it's difficult here because the question I was going to ask is which franchise do you reckon has the best sort of like tomb raiding scenarios but they both have deadly booby traps you know they both have treasure you know, it's very similar whilst also being completely different, just in tone. Because yeah, with Indiana Jones, it's more sort of spectacle and, oh, isn't and it great that this it, is happening? With Indiana Jones, you've got like a main character, which is Indiana Jones. Yes. But with the mummy, there's like a series of characters. 
Although well, you you still two. follow Brendan Fraser. Yeah, he's obviously sort of the man of the. I'd say he's film. potentially more dependent on his. Should we call them sidekicks? <laughs> his um, <laughs> assistants. I, I don't really know what to call them, but yeah, he's no, more dis- dependent on the people with him. Because with Indiana Jones, like the ladies he's with, especially in Temple of Doom, uh, she's Steven Spielberg's wife as well. Um, yes, the blonde lady from Temple of Doom. I forget her oh, name. Okay. But um, she's just she just screams. She's just annoying, and she screams, and yeah, she's. Yeah. The most ridiculous cartoonish damsel in distress. If you if you compare that to Rachel Vice, Vice in yeah. the Mummy, Vice who's the mummy. you know clearly the most intelligent. Like they make it clear yeah. that she's more intelligent she's, than him. She's, she can translate. Not, yeah, and she understands not, the history. She's Sorry, not historical. She's, she's not historical. She's not screaming all the time, which I like. It's good. Like you said, but, screaming. Yeah. Whereas in Raiders, the the sort of like the classic Indiana Jones's missus who comes back in the fourth one, the Crystal Scar. Again, I forget her name. It begins with an R. But I know she, who you mean. she was a lot better. Yeah, she was. But she, yeah, I don't think she was very screamy in either of those. Yeah, so it's films. Kate Capshaw was the blonde one who's married to Steven Spielberg. Are they still married? Uh, yes. And he met her on the movie as well. Oh, so they weren't married when they were filming. But that's where they met. No, he met her whilst making that one. Okay. But I've also just seen with Temple of Doom, the second one, the budget was $28 million and it made $333 million at the box office. That's what you call a good investment. Oh, yeah. That was, that was something. Yeah. And I did like how in the third Indiana Jones, it was more about his relationship with his dad than anything else. So yeah, it was him and Sean Connery. And yeah, Sean Connery was excellent. Oh, yeah. That's, that's my point. That's the point I was going to make. That his dad was Sean Connery, which just made that film mm. everything. And again, but I think it was good if it wasn't. That movie, budget of $48 million, made $474 million at the box office. Another solid investment. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's also worth pointing out that uh, Rachel Weisz doesn't actually play the same character in the third Mummy film. No, who is it who replaces her? I have no idea, but it really annoyed me when I watched that film and she wasn't. It, <laughs> she was replaced. I'm assuming she didn't want to take the role on. Yeah, she probably fancied herself doing something else because she's had quite a good career, really. She's married to Daniel Craig, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, it was Karen Allen was the lady from the first Indiana Jones and her character is called Marion Ravenwood. Yes, that's the one. And again, that movie, budget of $20 million, made $389 million. I'm guessing Steven Spielberg's main sort of bulk wealth came from Indiana Jones. That's how he, was that, this was before Jurassic Park, wasn't it? Uh, I think Jaws, was Jaws first? Yeah, Jaws would have been first, but I don't think, did he have? Because Jaws was huge. Jaws did really well. And obviously Steven Spielberg has a whole host of good films to his name because he's done Schindler's List. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that was the 90s. Schindler's List is 90s? Yeah. I thought it was early 2000s. I think it was the 90s. 90s okay. Uh, 1993. Yeah, yeah. So yes, that would be the 90s. So which one is your favourite Indiana Jones? Oh, good question. Very good question. Um, I'd say The Last Crusade with Sean Connery Connery and um, I did like the bit with the Holy Grail so he has to go through the booby traps and all that and then he has to choose wisely as that ghost Mm. knight says to him yeah Um, so I thought that was excellent I I did like that you know what I'm going to have to agree with you I think that one was that's probably my favourite as well yeah Um, I think it's a good all-rounder. But I, I do think it's because Sean Connery is in it. Yeah, I do love that father-son relationship. Although I have to say, I did enjoy Crystal Skull. I know that got a bit, a bit of a stating from some corners. But yes. I thought it was a good film. And I think it boils, down to, it boils down to one or two ridiculous moments. Things like uh, escaping the nuclear blast in the fridge. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Shia LaBeouf swinging through vines with monkeys. 
Yeah, yeah. There's a couple. They of were the bits that sort of I think people latched onto. I didn't mind the alien aspect. No, no, nor did I. I thought it was good. Because I, I think um, if you look I at the other it. ones, like the Holy Grail and you know um, the Lost Ark, where it melted people's faces, like there's always been the sort of supernatural like element to it. But I think I think they kind of went with what was sort of deemed popular, like the supernatural thing and the religious aspect of it, probably fitted in better at the time. Yeah, and I don't think it really lost its charm at any point. No, 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 I don't think it has either. I think it works. And I like the fact that they chose slightly different themes. Mm. Well. And there are ludicrous scenes in every single Indiana Jones movie has at least one. Like, remember in Temple of Doom where the guy's pulling people's hearts out and they're still screaming after he <laughs> wrenched their hearts out, you know? The classic scene. The other one yeah. that always cracks me up is the... What's the one where they steal that box? Pandora's box. Which one's that? I don't remember that. Yeah, they go and dig it up in, the, in Egypt. With Marianne Ravenwood. Oh, so the first one, Raiders. That is yeah, the yeah, Raiders. That is the Lost Ark, isn't it? That melts the faces. When the box gets opened, oh, yeah, their faces all get yeah. melted. And they save the, themselves by not looking at it. <laughs> yeah. And the, th- the ridiculous scene of that was the submarine bit, where he somehow jumps from the ship, gets in the submarine. How does he get in if they've blocked the hatch? Like, how does he get in? I don't get it. <laughs> oh, there's a number. Like, they all have their scenes. So I think it was a bit unfair to pick on Crystal Skull. But I think there was always going to be, you know, be people who just go not as good as the fierce ones. You know, push up yeah. their glasses from the bridge of their nose. Like, no, mm. It's not my uh, Indiana Jones. Apparently, right, that was go the on. film that almost got Sean Connery back out of retirement. Really? Because I know they yeah, tried yeah. to tempt him with Skyfall. He was meant to be the old man in the, in the house in Skyfall. They wrote that for Sean Connery and then he said yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, but this the Crystal Skull apparently was the closest they got to getting him back out of retirement. Uh, and then instead they had uh, to kill him off. Well, yeah, they they made a reference to him at the end of the film when they looked up to the sky. If your dad, if dad was here. Well, it's like. at the beginning of the film as well. Remember, he's got the photo frame. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, but because oh, Sean Connery ended in 2003 I think with League of Extraordinary Gentlemen a very yeah, underrated no, film I thought it was I a great film. film yeah I thought it was a good film but I yeah, have seen he, that film probably 15 20 times yeah I like that film too um, I think anyway should, back to this yeah I think we should start talking about the mummy we've talked about Indiana Jones a lot yeah. so which one's your favorite mummy out of the three uh it's it's For me, it's the first between one. the first two and then there's the scenes one. I like in the second one, but I think the first one is an overall better film. Yeah, I agree. I th- I, I, and also, I think it was also slightly funnier. Yes, without being more... too cartoonish. The second yeah. one was a bit more cartoonish. But yes. I did like the Magi's large-scale battle with the really bad CGI Underworld army. Yes. Yeah. That was That's great. I did like that. Yeah. yeah. No, but and the first then... one still, for me, is the, is the classic one. And then obviously the rock showed up. You know, you talked about including four films. Is it worth including the Scorpion King? No, because that's a franchise on its own. It was a spin-off. Oh, oh yeah, they made like five Scorpion King movies, didn't they? Oh, they five? made a few. They, they I know they three. made a few. Well, they made I know, three. Oh, is that how much? Sorry, I'm not the Scorpion King expert that you are. No, <laughs> neither am I, but I'm pretty sure it's three. <laughs> But, but no, no, we did I'm... get The Rock in the second Mummy movie as ridiculous CGI scorpion yeah, beast. the CGI in the second Mummy was terrible. It is a disappointment. off on it, really. They I think they just that. did what they could with the budget. And it's probably worth... I'm going to check the budget for you now. <laughs> and let you know. And we've I'm... got to remember it is of the time. So yeah, The well, Mummy yeah, Returns was that. 2001. So we're talking you 19 say... years ago. Yeah, but if you compare that to the CGI... CGI of some other films around that time. Like this, what? This doesn't... Well, thanks for putting me on the spot. Because <laughs> <laughs> whilst I would agree um, that if you went a few years like Jura- later on... Like Jurassic Park. That was that, more practical, wasn't it? Well, yeah, the close-up shots of like, T-Rex's head was an electronic, electronic head, so obviously. But there were other parts of it which they would have used CGI. <clears throat> the zoomed think... out bits were... were they're, um, they're coming out of the water at the beginning. Okay. Oh, you know what I will say that the CGI holds up from that time? X-Men. 
the first X-Men movie. That was about that time. And, and that CGI really holds up. Yeah. Right. There's a good example. So, See? right. I'll give you that. I've just looked up the budget for The uh, Mummy Returns. It was $98 million. And it did bring in $435 million at the box office. That's, so. that's, still, that's still solid. In that case, oh, they yeah. could have probably bumped up the budget a little bit. But then you wonder how much of that budget went to salaries. Hmm. Well, there's only two main big big salaries, which is... Brendan Rachel Fraser Hayes and Rachel Weisz. Yeah. Have you seen Brendan recently? He's not in his best state, but I don't think anyone no. can criticise him for getting older. It happens to all of oh, us. Oh, no, no, it's not that, but I think he's been enjoying too much food and drink. I think that happens. I think when you've been... Uh, guy who spent his time in the gym building muscle and fitness i think once you stop doing that it does naturally turn into fat yeah but again we're getting up to the off topic <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the well, first one way, holds up memorable thing from the first film those beetles that could get under your skin oh they, that was a good i don't know who came up with that but that was a good story though that is that. that's something that properly freaks you out and gives you the shivers, because yeah. you just imagine if a beetle like that went under your skin. Like, what can you really do about that? Yeah. Apart from no, what they yeah. do in the movie, where they just scoop it out with a knife. They also the first one also had a couple of funny characters. You had that. Um, there were Omid, Omid Jalili. Yeah, yeah Omid Jalili's character. He was. And of course, he dies from those. Well, they're not. Yeah. They're scarab beetles, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so he was funny. Plus the you know the little like uh, John Hanna. The tiny, yeah, it was, what's his character? Uh, Jonathan. Yeah, he was funny. And then oh, course, no, you're thinking, Brett, so I'm thinking of Rachel Weiss's brother. Who comes in the second one, or is he in the first one as no, well? No, he's in the first one. Yeah. Large character in the first one, because he's the one who reads the quote from the book at the end, yeah. that they need yeah. to banish him. So but, he's, um, he's, that's he's, John Hannah, and, and that's Jonathan. But the yes. little guy who I think you're thinking of, who was like the mummy sidekick or slave, it was or whatever Brendan's you want to call him. Sidekick and then became the mummy. Yeah, so side. his name was Benny. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And he was funny too. So that's what I'm saying. The first mm. one had a lot more funny, like interesting characters thrown in. Yeah, and I think there was a bit more dread in the mummy series than the Indiana Jones. Because the Indiana Jones was just like sort of blockbuster fun. Mm. Whereas I think the mummy, there was like more sinister tones and more real. You are in danger. Well, T- Temple of Doom got a bit like a bit crazy when they went down and the heart ripping out bit. I think yeah, it a bit... but it still especially... had the elements of Indiana Jones where it was more fun I... and it's more oh, how is he going to get out of this rather than oh, he's in danger. You also had those uh, interesting little bits they put in, like in, again in Temple when they were eating the monkey's brain, for example. <sighs> <laughs> I wasn't really going to touch upon that because they there were quite a few racist elements to the Indian people. <laughs> yeah, with that but being still, a whole, part of it. Yeah, but still, the fact that I put that in there was, was kind of funny. But we talked about a good opening scene. Now, Indiana Jones definitely had the best opening scene, but I did like the opening part of the Mummy where Brendan Fraser's fighting in that battle against that army that's attacking, mm. and then it. Second so, one? no, first one, very first one, first thing that happens is Brendan Fraser's a part of this oh, army. Yes. And uh, they're charging shot. at them on horses. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then he's sort of cornered, but the guys who are going to kill him sort of run away, and then there's the yeah. big screaming mouth in the sand in the mummy. Yeah, that's also a good opening scene. You're right. That's that is really excellent. Good. And yeah. then they bring him back, and they're hanging him, aren't they? So he's being executed and they're hanging him. And apparently they almost actually hung Brendan Fraser in real life. Like well, he actually, yeah, accidentally almost killed him because the hanging mechanism failed. So he Surely almost actually like, choked to death. Chopped him down? I would have had like a, a, an axe well, line. Obviously he didn't actually die in real life. No. The thing actually killed him because they did the trap door mechanism. Ah, uh, yes. And then whatever should have been holding him up didn't... Didn't, just yeah, the drop. harness around his neck sort of didn't yeah. work properly. Oh, well, <laughs> at, le- at least he got out of it alive, so it's fine. I think they used that shot in the movie, and it is him actually genuinely nearly choking to death. Is that why he looks so real then? Because <laughs> he's Probably. actually choking. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought he gave a good performance. Like, you believed him the whole way through. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And he no, looked no. cool. He did look cool. Yeah, yeah. Who, so, who do you think is the bigger hero, Indiana or Brendan? Interesting. 
Because Indiana Jones does more of it himself. Yeah. Whereas Brendan Fraser does it more for the right reasons, if that's fair. Well, I don't feel like he does it for the right reasons, because he kind of got roped in it by accident. But he, he does a lot for like his wife, and especially in later ones, his wife and his son. and Yeah. He's trying to be a family man. Yeah, there is a bit whereas more in, of that. Whereas Indiana Jones is all about, oh, history and museum. Yeah, so he more starts out sort of to get the treasure, and then it turns into, oh, I better do this, otherwise the world's in danger. Yeah. So it's difficult you, to say. Who do you wish you were more? Oh, I think you'd wish to be Indiana Jones. I think that's, I think that's pretty fair. I think everyone would rather be Indiana Jones than Brendan Fraser's character. <laughs> I forget his name. It's Rick, isn't it? Something, something. It's O'Connell? Rick something. Yeah, Rick it's O'Connell. O'Connell. It's Rick O'Connell, yeah. Yeah, uh, we got there. But I did <laughs> like in The First Mummy where he's going around and slowly killing the different guys who'd stolen his like body parts one by one. Yeah, and, it, and then he regenerates back yeah, into like... Yeah, he forms more. more into himself. That's also quite cool. I did like that. The way, like, you know those guys are doomed and it just builds to their doom. I, I did think that was good. Yeah. But to be fair, it was very well written, the mummy, surprisingly yeah. so. Um, and then it became less so, like how Rachel Weiss was like the reincarnation of some Egyptian woman, and yeah, I think, bit, I think it was a bit woolly. But the, to be honest, that wasn't as bad as the third one. I thought the third one was a bit just slapdash. The third um, one was a cash grab, I'd say. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, and I think... Let me check to see if it did actually manage to grab some cash. Uh, yeah. So, Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor was made on a budget of $145 million, and it did bring in $403 million. Okay, so yeah, it was a cash grab. So these are all successful. Like, we can't even claim that any of them are duds. No, they're not. Because clearly all of these movies in the franchise have been successes. Yeah. So but I, I think the third Mummy was a success just because people wanted to see it. Yeah, I think they went so, to it and then realised what it was. Because Jet Li played in that film as well. He was the bad guy. He was the Chinese mummy, I think. Yeah. Um, but it was and the, just, CG, um, yeah. the CGI in that wasn't that great either when he was riding on the chariot, if I remember correctly. I thought yeah. that was quite poorly done as well. It just... Weirdly, the yetis, the snow, snow mm. yetis thing, it looked, looked more real than Jet Li's character, which was odd. Yeah, I just felt I, I never really got drawn into the third one. And I think as we come to the discussion of which one wins this war... Yes, excellent. Well, very well played there. I think that the big disappointment out of both franchises would have to be Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Because whilst you could say that Kingdom of Crystal Skull is a disappointment in some people's eyes, I still, felt, I still felt it was true to the other Indiana Jones movies. It's, the way I would judge it is that I could watch Crystal Skull again and be satisfied. Yeah. But I Whereas, don't think... I've never watched the third mummy again. I'll yeah, apart from Brendan Fraser, it just felt like a separate movie to the rest of the franchise. Yeah, it doesn't feel as connected. You, you are right. And I think it's Indiana Jones has more staying power and more and iconic it, movies and more iconic scenes. I think Indiana Jones does win it quite clearly. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. As, as a franchise, I think Indiana Jones is the stronger one. What also ruins is the, the, the fact that Rachel Weisz didn't play in the third film. Yeah, and I think the they should have done they everything have they could to draw her back. Wasn't as good, yeah. Which is a shame, but... Mm. So I think we've settled the debate on which is the better franchise quite easily there. I'm just yep. going to ask you one final question. Go on. Who has the better outfit? <laughs> <laughs> or between O'Connell and Indiana Jones? Yep. Um... Indiana Jones? See, it's a tough one. Because I think you could... No, you couldn't mix and match. Because the hat and leather that, jacket is good. But I do like that white shirt and vest combo. I was going to say this. The bottom half of Indiana Jones looks rubbish. But the top half of O'Connell looks great. It's a tough one, isn't it? I think Indiana Jones for the day and O'Connell for the night. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a pretty solid <laughs> franchise war there. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Right. Was good pro- like yeah. cheese and wine. <laughs> you see <laughs> ridiculous things sometimes. 
<laughs> okay, right. Thank you for joining us for another Franchise War. We'll be back with another we'll one. Please feel free to let us know what franchises you'd like to see pitted against each other. And any other ideas for podcasts, podcasts, we're always open to any form of discussion. Absolutely. Feel uh, free to like and subscribe. Thank you for saying it for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> you do it every week. I thought I might as well do it. Yeah, very happy with that. And uh, thank you, everyone. All right. See you guys later. See you soon.